Six years ago, I released a record called Detested. It was kind of a landmark thing for me, I guess. It was something I had to do, really. And to this day, of all the things that people ask about with that record, people are still asking about the guitar sounds. In between then and now, a lot has happened. I guess you could say I've been a bit busy, but finally I've been able to complete and release this companion EP for the record, which basically closes the entire chapter that I started when I made that album six years ago. You'd be surprised just how much a cabinet simulation plugin would factor into all of that being possible. Now, it was back in about 2011 that I first started messing around with the idea of amp simulators and impulse responses and things like that. And it was a really kind of a new thing to me at the time because I had a tracking room. And so it was not difficult for me to set up a real amp and set up a real cabinet and use a mic and do that. But eventually kind of curiosity, you know, gets the best of you and you start looking at, at different things. The biggest thing about it though, and what made it the most appealing to me was you could have completely self-contained tones inside of the computer. And it wasn't just for the sake of working quietly or anything like that. It was also sort of ease of recall and consistency. Ultimately though, it ended up proving to be pretty cumbersome because at the time, impulse responses were sort of in their infancy. And um, when you wanted to do something different sonically with them, you had to make changes by loading different files. And I mean, I'm a recording engineer. I have been for quite some time. And so what I could have accomplished in a fraction of the time by simply going and moving a microphone, I would have had to go into this large library with like hundreds of little files and choose one and see if it sounded right. And if it didn't sound right, reload it. And it was just a really monotonous process. And frankly, it got in the way of being creative and, and getting ideas down when I had them. Shortly before I made my way to Los Angeles in 2012, I was introduced to a cabinet simulation plugin made by a company called Two Notes Audio Engineering, and it was called Wall of Sound. So now, all of a sudden, I can place a mic in real time. I can do it virtually inside of the computer, but I can still move the mic just like I would move it outside of the computer in the tracking room. And this changed everything. Being both a musician and a recording engineer is kind of a slippery slope because it's really easy in the studio environment to get bogged down and distracted with trying to dial in new tones or experimenting with new sounds. And you could end up going in having a great idea musically and totally get sidetracked from it because you've been tweaking and toiling over something which you're probably not going to use in the end anyway. The way it had happened for the Detested record was that I needed a quick sound, which was an adequate quick sound for writing and demoing the music on the record. So naturally, in that situation, I went for an amp simulator plugin and the Wall of Sound plugin. If we're being honest, I could have used any amplifier through any cabinet with any microphone, probably in any room I could imagine for the sounds on that record. That was actually the plan originally for the Keeper tracking for that record, originally. But sometimes you have moments where you stumble upon something and something kind of happens and you go, that's it, that's it right there, I found it. And that's what happened with this. I ended up having the Keeper sounds before the album had even been fully written. It wasn't really a matter of convenience, it was more a matter of that's the sound. And it just happened that Wall of Sound was a key component in achieving that. People to this day still ask how I achieved those sounds. And usually the reaction I get from them when I disclose how I did that is one of either shock or complete frustration and anger. You know, because nobody expects that. And um, 
It's not really a, a matter of how much money it costs to get there. It's just a matter of how the tools were used. But some people, you know, have spent countless thousands of dollars on whatever digital modeling, you know, jack of all trades boxes out there, and, and they can't get it to work. And it's just maybe because it's not so easy to use up front. Maybe it doesn't relate to actually using the real gear in the studio. So now fast forward six years and I've released this companion EP to detest it and it's called Additional Machinations. I view making a record in many ways like making a feature film. There has to be continuity between songs, sonically, aesthetically, thematically. And since this material came from the era that that first record was created, it had to have that continuity, and it had to be sonically and aesthetically identical. So basically, all of the stuff on the Additional Machinations EP was recalled and mixed and mastered identically to how it was done originally back in 2014. At that point, it was really just a matter of loading channel strip settings. All of it comes right back. A tube amp would not sound that close six years after the fact. And it's not like I could keep a speaker cabinet mic'd up sitting in the exact same position for six years and just leave it there. It just doesn't work that way. There are just so many variables and it's just not possible to get it as close and exact as Wall of Sound allows. I'm not exaggerating when I say that pretty much every single project I've done since discovering Two Notes and their products has involved two notes and their products in one way or another. It doesn't really matter if it's a hardware product like the Reload or if it's software like Wall of Sound, it's always there, it's vital. It's always been there and it will always be there. Yeah.